three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new Tier 7 campaign ship, the German Tier 7 battleship Brandenburg. So, with that being said, let's look at our commander. We are using Henry J. Hyde. We have Haruna and Franz von Hipper as our uh, inspirations. We have Flammable Cannoneer, Porcupine, Marksmanship, and Master Mechanic with the Fight Fire with Fire perk. Okay. We are running Secondary Battery Mod 2. Steering Gears Mod 2, Target Acquisition Mod, and Secondary Battery Mod 3. For our loadout, we are using the Secondary Battery Booster, or Enhanced Secondary Targeting Consumable, whatever you want to call it. We have uh, the Alpha Tester Flag, which again does nothing, it's just purely cosmetic, and then the camo that comes with the ship. For survivability, we have 62,920 hit points with a 23% torpedo damage reduction. For guns, we have 12 305mm 56 caliber SKC-39 main guns that fire out to 18.4 kilometers. They reload in 26.5 seconds, which is awful. Okay, let's put that into perspective. These guns reloaded 26.5 seconds. That is literally as fast as my Iowa 16-inch guns, and these are 305mm guns. These things have the DPM of absolutely nothing. It is just awful. The worst 305mm reload in the game, bar none. 180 degree turn time is not bad at 30 seconds. HE shell maximum damage 3600 with a 27% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage 9400. Um, that's another downside. It literally has cruiser AP maximum damage. So even when you citadel things, it doesn't really feel like you're citadeling things, if that makes sense. But the secondaries on this thing are fun. 105 millimeter L65 Doppel C37s, you get 20 of those that reach out to 12 kilometers with this build and do, and they reload every 2.7 seconds. They fire HE with a maximum damage of 1200 and a 5% chance to set fires. And then you have the 150 millimeter L55 SKC28s. You get 12 of those that also fire out to 12 kilometers, reload in just six seconds. They fire HE with a maximum shell damage of 1700 and an 8% chance to set fires. Um, and with this build, they're actually relatively decently accurate. So there's that. Uh, they're still not American battleship secondary accurate, but. They're, they're not bad. They're better than the Bismarcks, or at least they feel better than the Bismarcks. And I believe it has more secondaries than the Bismarck. But uh, torpedo launchers. You also have torpedoes on this thing. Uh, 533mm Veerling torpedoes. You get eight of those. A quad launcher on either side of the ship. They reload in 90 seconds with a 7.2 second 180 degree turn time. And the maximum damage isn't bad at 13,700. Though if you hit any sort of battleship with that with any sort of uh, torpedo reduction, you're not going to get much out of it. Um, though you do get those floods, which are nice, which by that point somebody's probably already used their damage con to put out a fire that your secondaries have set. Uh, torpedo detectability is 1.3 kilometers. They go 6 kilometers, um, and they also have a 64 knot torp speed, so kind of middle of the road there. Not fast, not slow. AA defense, meh. It's German, not really existent, but 30 millimeter flak 38, you got 18 times 4, which would be 36 times 4, which would be 72 of those, doing 257 damage per second, but they don't fire until 3 kilometers. And then 105 millimeter L65 Doppel C37 dual purpose secondaries, you get 20 of those, uh, doing 167 damage per second, and they those actually reach out to 4.5 kilometers. Maneuverability. Maximum speed is very good at 32 and a half knots. Uh, remember, we're not running um, what is it uh, gyrating drill bits, so we don't get a we don't drop our our speed at all. So 32 and a half knots, very good uh, for a battleship. Turning circle radius says 820 meters, feels better than that, especially with this rudder shift. Uh, even though we do run the steering gears mod, it, it says it's 13.4. This ship actually feels relatively agile for a battleship. 
I know, it sounds weird, but I'm telling you, it feels better than the numbers say. Concealment. Detectability by C is literally the exact same as in Iowa. 14.7 kilometers, so you're going to be spotted easily all the time. Detectability by air, 12.3. Again, spotted all the time. Guaranteed detectability is always 2, and the detectability while firing in smoke is 12 kilometers. So you actually have a pretty good detectability while firing in smoke, uh, which comes in handy very rarely, but it does occasionally. But uh, you do have good armor in this thing, as long as you're not broadside. Uh, you've got the 30 millimeter bow, or 32 millimeter bow, sorry, that every battleship at tier 7 and above has, which is nice. But you also have 60 millimeter belt armor, which means oh, Yamis do not overmatch. Now, this is a thing that most of the German battleships enjoy, uh, having that icebreaker bow. And uh, it's very nice to keep you from being overmatched by the Yami, but remember the Yami can, in fact, overmatch you if it aims high towards those guns. It can go through that 32 millimeters, or if it splashes in the water, it can technically go through the 32 millimeters below. So keep that in mind. Okay? Just because you have an icebreaker doesn't mean that you can bow tank a Yami. If the Yami player knows what he's doing, he can absolutely punch right through the front of your ship uh, relatively easily. But, because you have that icebreaker, and because you also have very good belt armor, um, we're going to avoid that armor belt that's 350 millimeters because it's so narrow that it's not really going to affect anything. Uh, but, oops, oops, leave that in. You can see it also has that, that little bit of uh, turtleback armor that we know and love. That angled, angled armor that keeps everything from, uh, you know, it makes things glance off at uh, close ranges anyway keeps you from being citadeled up close and personal usually however at the end of the day you do have a slightly raised citadel and it is not impossible to be citadeled in this thing okay but i will say this so far this thing has been a lot of fun to play even if it's not the most consistent um we don't run an accuracy build on it because the whole point of this thing is torpedoes and secondaries. Um, the guns, like I said, the DPM on these guns is awful. Uh, you might even just decide to give up the AP. The AP's not bad. Uh, it'd be better if you take off the porcupine skill and go with the Aladad to give you the better penetration angles. Uh, that might help a little bit. But uh, you, this might be a ship that you just primarily run HE in solely due to the fact that you're going to be getting close and the secondaries are also going to be able to set fires. And if you can trigger some damage cons, there's a good chance that you're going to catch people and, and get permanent fires on them. And then, of course, you get the, the home run of the torpedoes. But my, my experience with the torpedoes in these German battleships is that every time you get ready to use them, they get knocked out. So don't ever count on being able to use your torpedoes. Uh, and don't rush straight across the map to try to use your torpedoes. Ironclad. Above average armor thickness, greater resistance to all forms of armor penetration. Guns aplenty. High cali or a high number of guns, because you have 12 of them. But again, they're only 305 millimeters. So even if you catch somebody flat broadside, you're not going to be hitting them that hard. Modest guns is the other downside. That's the 305 millimeter guns that I was just talking about. But Brandenburg, a battleship design that was close to the Bismarck class, but carried a different main battery that consisted of 12 305mm guns that were developed in Germany in the late 1930s. Year of design was 1945. And overall, I think it's a very good looking ship. It, it really does kind of fit together really nicely. Uh, you got a lot going on in the center of the ship as well with all the secondaries and then the torpedo tubes are kind of tucked in there right at midship. But again, the torpedo tubes are in the perfect place to get absolutely annihilated anytime you get into a fight. So keep that in mind. It gives you very, very good torpedo angles, but they are very easy to knock out and oftentimes get destroyed or just knocked out just as you need them the most. So keep that in mind. But uh, overall, it's a fun little ship to take out. Um, I do recommend it as like a meme build ship. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good, um, you know, overall battleship, but, but it is a fun meme ship. So if you like that sort of thing, maybe take a destroyer out there, utilize that smoke, get up close and personal, just let the secondaries do what they want to do. Um, but we've got five heals in this thing too, which means you can survive quite a bit. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Northern Waters in the first match. Now, we're going to have two 
matches for you guys. This first match is going to be me, Northern Waters, in the Brandenburg, and this is the very first match that I played. Now, I will say this. I screwed up here, guys. I did not have the secondary booster uh, on the ship build during this first match because I completely forgot it was a thing. Like, I forgot you actually have to select it. So, as you can see, I have a catapult fighter instead. So, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this match could have gone even better had I had that secondary booster. Now, let's just get it right out the gate. What do I think of this ship? Honestly, I think it's a fine ship. There's a lot of different ways you could play this ship. Uh, the thing that I will point out is that it does have a very low DPM uh, due to the fact that it has a very slow reload. Now, I'm sure you can buff the reload a bunch to try to get it down to uh, usable, but honestly, I think where this ship is going to excel is as a meme ship. It is a fun ship to just go out and have a little bit of fun in. Not necessarily the ship that you want to try to carry in. Uh, probably not going to be the most consistent ship in the world. But, but, it has a lot of options. Uh, you've got great secondaries. Uh, you've got great freaking, uh, you've got a lot of main guns. They're not the best. 305mm guns are never going to be the go-to for what you want, right? Alaska, the, um... Stalingrad's 305 millimeter guns. This is different. Like they have ridiculous guns. Odin, Brandenburg, Azuma, not as much. Uh, they are okay. They are serviceable. You can use them, but unless people are going like flat broadside to you, the 305s just feel underwhelming. And with this thing's long reload, like everybody talked about the Kansas's long reload, but at least Kansas has 16-inch guns, uh, you know. But this thing has a ridiculous reload, and it's only 305 millimeters, meaning like th it just doesn't have that scare factor other than its torpedoes. Now, the problem with the torpedoes, at least in my uh, experience with German torpedo battleships, is everybody knows you got them. So closing the distance to actually use those torpedoes is a gigantic pain in the neck. Also, every single time that you think you're about to use the torpedoes, they get knocked out or destroyed. That's just the way it goes for me. It, it, I don't know if I'm just unlucky, but every single time that I think, okay, I'm going to YOLO this man and get him off the board. I got four torpedoes. They're going to punch a guy right in the mouth. That's when my torpedo tube on the side that the guy is on gets knocked out every time. Every time. Uh, so, that's an issue. But as you're about to see here, our secondaries are no freaking joke. Uh, and unlike the Bismarcks, these seem to hit a lot more on, or a lot more accurately. Um, now, that being said, it's still a fireworks show. It's not like the American secondaries that just go straight at the target. Like, these go up into the air and they loop. Now, the good news is, that can help you. Also, because it means that they can shoot over islands unlike American secondaries. So there is a chance that you could actually sit behind an island and let your secondaries just poke people. Uh, but, as you can see, we're scoring decent damage with the main guns too, as long as we're getting decent angles to use. Now, where this ship excels as we get our first blood with a uh, fire on the Amagi, uh, where the ship excels is when people push towards it. I don't think it's a ship that you want to push directly at the enemy in. And I'll, I will say this because every time I've done it, as we just slap that Iowa for 18,000 damage, that just shows you that you can't sleep on this thing. It is a battleship after all. And just like the, the Stalingrad and the Azuma and the um, uh, Alaska, if you go broadside to 305 millimeter guns, they do have enough penetration to citadel the ever-living crap out of you. Now, the citadels aren't going to hurt as much, but citadels are citadels. And when you're stacking up, you know, 15 to 20,000 damage salvos on people, they're going to, it's going to hurt, okay? You can't just let it happen. Um, now, we've got a lightning here who's in our, uh, our smoke screen to the left. Uh, he's also got a Minotaur pushing up on us. We're going to show just a little bit about the, the Citadel of the Mino here. Um, now, again, everybody knows Mino is like the easiest thing to Citadel in the world, right? 
Uh, we don't get the best accuracy in the world, but we do get two citadels. But two citadels is only half his hit points. And Mino gets a huge heal, which means he's going to be able to get some of that back. Now, he's currently being targeted by our secondaries, and our secondaries have already proven that they are more than capable of doing all the things, as we are already over 60, or 60 uh, secondary hits in this game. Now, you can see we've lost our torpedo tubes, and that's something that just happens to me every single time. Now, we're also double-fired, which is not preferable, but at the end of the day, we also have fight fire with fire. And he gets a third fire, and it immediately extinguishes the fires. And that is a skill that I think you have to have on your brawler builds, okay? Will to rebuild is great. If you can use that, uh, like on the Massachusetts, I get it. But if you do not have the will to rebuild, like in our case with Henry Hyde, if you do not have will to rebuild, you have to use that fight fire with fire. And even if you don't, or even if you do have will to rebuild, consider using fight fire with fire. Because with all of the fire starters in this game currently, it really is kind of nice to have that as a backup plan. Because how many times you get triple fired right after uh, damage conning? And it immediately extinguishes it. And it can do it twice, three times. Depending on how long your, your damage con cooldown is and how many people are spamming you with fire. Like, it's an infinite number of times it can damage con you while you're on cooldown. That is huge. Now, the heals on this thing aren't the biggest heals in the world. They're okay. Uh, you do get five of them with this build, which will keep you in the fight for a long time. But, uh, it's, again, not the largest heal in the world. And honestly, you're still going to be susceptible to, to being taken out and chunked because you're in a German battleship. And much like the Americans, the superstructure in the German and American battleships, I've talked about it a million times. They have a gajillion hit points allocated to the superstructure of the German and American battleships uh, superstructure. It's just the way it is. It's part of the game. We know it's a thing. Uh, it helps get rid of these extremely, otherwise extremely tanky battleships. Um, I get it. I understand the balancing factor of it, but it is frustrating as somebody who plays the ships that uh, you you just take an ungodly amount of damage to your superstructure, and uh, you couple that with the fact that you know the ships are, are massive and they're very easy targets. So like, it is unfortunate. And as you can see right there, we're double fired immediately by the uh, Cleveland. He's going to continue to hit us with HE. Now here's one thing that I will say that I do wrong. I shouldn't be trying to dodge his fire at this point. He's got a double fire on me. All I need to do is sail in a straight line and let this man hit me with more fires. If he gets another fire, it puts it back out again. So once you have a double fire going, you might want to stop dodging because you're only hurting yourself. The sooner he gets a, a triple fire, the sooner your, your skill activates. So. That's one mistake that I made. Again, I'm pushing towards a destroyer. I know that I am. Uh, part of it is I'm trying to get close to get rid of this guy. Uh, we are reaching out to try to slap this Cleveland, but unfortunately just not able to hit the Citadel of a Cleveland for some reason with this thing. And uh, he doesn't end up getting a second fire. And you can see this is the first time I've contemplated using uh, torpedoes. That's why it was already set on a, a, a thing. He did, he did get a third fire, but immediately it gets put out, and now we've got a single fire going. You can see I am salivating at the fact that there's a destroyer sitting in a smoke screen right off to my left, and uh, I launch it directly at him. I should have launched it away from him a little bit, anticipating him trying to get out of the way, because he's got to know, right? Like, he's got to know. But uh, Iowa comes around the corner. We slap him. Uh, we get our high caliber metal. We're, we're going down here. We know we're going down. We're just trying to do as much as we can. And you can see him swinging back towards the uh, destroyer in hopes that I could potentially uh, torp the Iowa. But unfortunately, my Iowa or my torp tubes on that side of the ship are gone. And you can see the the secondaries immediately smash that lightning. We also got a fire on the Iowa right as we died with our secondaries, which is something that usually happens quite a bit. But uh, we did everything on our side of the map to hold for as long as possible against insurmountable odds, seemingly. Even though we had other people with us, they died very quickly, so they left us against pretty much everybody. They did help a lot with the Amagi, but then we had the Lightning, we had the um, Cleveland, and we had the Iowa there. All of which, 1v1ing me, I, I think I could easily kill, 
but all of them at the same time makes it a much t uh, tougher task. And uh, you can see Roma pushing in. He takes a torp right off the bat. And he has a beautiful shot at the Iowa and slaps the Iowa because, you know, Iowa can go broadside to people all day long and sometimes it gets away with it, but more often than not, it ends poorly for the Iowa. I mean, don't take it for me. I just, you know, it is my most played ship. But uh, going broadside to anything in an Iowa is a risk because even heavy cruisers can citadel in Iowa if, if they get a good shot. So you got to keep it in mind. You can't be going broadside. Now, Roma here, unfortunately, is going to take some more torps here. And, of course, it's going to cause a flood. Uh, he just damaged Conda Flood a moment ago. So, this is one of those times where you got to understand what you're up against. Uh, the, the Lightning has the ability to stack torps on top of it. But I think, uh, I think the Roma here realizes he's being pushed. The Iowa goes down, which is huge. And that leaves this, uh, this Cleveland who is just begging for it. And at this point, the Roma is like, you know what? All I'm going to do is, I know I'm dead, I'm going to go ahead and try to take this guy out. So he turns out, he gets all the guns to bear, and he aims true, and pop goes the weasel, down goes the Cleveland. And uh, sure, Roma dies, but look what he did. He gets rid of the Cleveland, that leaves just a lightning with no hit points, and we have a Worcester, we have a, uh, I can't remember what our other cruiser is. But we have a Worcester, we have another cruiser. Uh, looks like an Ochikov, and we have the Jean Bart. So between the three of them, they should have no trouble dealing with a l zero health. I mean, the guy has no health. By the way, the guy actually watches the channel too, because I've seen him comment on videos. Um, plus, I think he sent me a message after the fact, the guy in the Lightning. But uh, yeah, overall, I think this is a good ship. I'm not, I'm not hating on this ship at all. And as a matter of fact, I would prefer taking this ship out as opposed to the, the Turpins. Uh, just solely due to the fact that it is a little bit more flexible than the Turpins. The agility on the ship feels good to me. I don't hate the agility. Of course, the German battleships all seem, well, with the exception of Gneisno, but, uh, like, the, the Turpins, the Bismarck, they're relatively agile. Uh, they're really good for most battleships, especially high-tier, you know, faster battleships. So, that's nice. Plus the fact you're generally running a brawler build on them, with something, whether it's a uh, hide or, or if you're just running a pure brawler build with secondary memes, uh, you're not running gyrating drill bits, so you're not limiting your top speed, which means it's some of the fastest battleships in the game. But the 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 thing that I want to caution everybody about is that I think these these ships are best when they're not yoloing, okay? You need to hold on to your hit points. You need to save your torpedo tubes until later in the game. That's when they become the most dangerous. Because nobody can fight that. It doesn't matter who they are. You cannot stop a German battleship from killing you with torpedoes late in the game. Nine times out of ten. Okay? And the reason for that is... It takes a lot of effort to get rid of a German battleship. It just does. Just like it does for American battleships unless they go broadside. It takes a lot of effort to get rid of these German turtles. And it just does. They have all the armor in the world. They have torpedoes that you gotta watch for. They've got secondaries that when they decide to start hitting can stack up a lot of damage very quickly. And the Brandenburg has more secondaries, I believe, than the Bismarck. And they seem to be more accurate. Now that could be because I'm running a full secondary build on this thing, and on my Bismarck I think I run uh, the Aiming System Mod 1, and I also run the uh, Aladad skill uh, to help buff that AP for the 15-inch uh, the guns. Um, and this thing I actually run Porcupine, and I run the secondary uh, skill at the first slot for the equipment. So, again, not comparing ex exactly apples to apples, but I do like the secondaries on this thing better than the Bismarck secondaries. At least with this current build. Maybe I'll try this build on my Bismarck and see how that goes. But the Bismarck's 15-inch guns, I like to hit the target with. You know what I mean? Um, sure, they're inaccurate, but still, I try to buff them. But 126,000 damage, 2400 base XP, and this is my very first match. And the second match, I want to showcase two things. First of all, I'm showcasing the Brandenburg and its, and its uh, little environment here. But I'm also showcasing the brand new map. Islands of Ice, 
with the new like night aurora borealis going on the northern lights it's absolutely beautiful i love the lighting effects off the the surface of the ocean um, it would be cool if it was a little bit darker and maybe they had some star shells up uh you know just to give it a little bit more uh dramatic feel i guess uh but you know it's still a very nice map and it's a nice change to get new maps like this into the game um, I have seen this map on on PC, so I'm not I'm not like completely you know new to the map. However, this map is freaking ridiculous for crossfires. If you like pushing forward, if you like using islands to to mask your advance and get crossfires on people, this map is your wet dream. Apologize for the uh, you know crude reference, but seriously, as you're about to see. In this match, we are going to absolutely smash people because they just have no freaking situational awareness. It's not like we're going to be hidden the entire time, but you can use these islands to close in the distance and create crossfires that you just do not get on a lot of maps. And those crossfires coupled with these secondaries, coupled with these guns when they decide to actually behave, holy mother of God, by the way, somebody brought in a Nuremberg. I know, it's, it's weird. People are actually weird. But uh, we do have a Bismarck over here. And again, this is those crossfires I was talking about. People get the epicenter, they all start going towards the center of the map. Like, oh, we gotta get over here, we gotta try to make sure we do things. And lo and behold, Spartan comes around the corner, and I thought he was going faster than that. He doesn't, he slows down. So we're not gonna get much with the first shot. But uh, you can see, I'm not, it's not that I'm not spotted here. I am spotted by these guys because I fire my guns. Plus, now I'm inside range to be spotted anyway. So, I am here. Everybody can see me. But they don't care that I exist. And the reason they don't care I exist is because they don't pay attention to their minimap until they get blapped, and then they're screwed. Because they're in wide open waters and I have their broadside. And if they turn to bow tank me, they're giving their broadside to somebody else. Which is why I always preach to win your side and try to protect a flank. Because if I, if I win my side, if I protect my flank, and my buddies on the left side try to win their side and protect their flank, these guys can't possibly bow tank both of us. They can bow tank one or the other, but somebody's going to have a juicy broadside, and those people are going to have a good time. Uh, sure, we're not the most accurate guns in the world, and sure, we have to be careful that they have a Bismarck and a Brandenburg directly off my bow, so we've got to, you know, keep that in mind. But, creating crossfires is about positioning, and about knowing when you can push, and being able to mask your push until you get those crossfires, because at that point, it's too late for the enemy to really react. And that's something that just people don't do. And that's why I'm so successful in my Montana. That's why I'm so successful in the Kansas. Is that I move up, I create those crossfires, I get those broadside opportunities. It isn't that I'm just sitting in front of people at 20 kilometers slinging shells. Sure, I'm sure it would feel underwhelming at that point. But... When you create these sort of crossfire opportunities and then start to advance when you know you have the advantage, that's when you have those great games. And that's when you get those really fun big salvos into people that everybody loves. I don't care who you are. But Iowa has pushed forward. Again, we slapped him. He pushes forward trying to get away from us. He is now completely weak to our team. And he ends up getting torped by our Odin. And again, Odin is doing the thing that you know, I don't recommend doing in these battleships right off the bat, which is just charging straight into the middle of the map, going straight for people. But it worked this time to get rid of the Iowa, so he probably continued to do that. And, you know, it also helps when people can do that and get away with it. I just can't. When people see my name, they, they focus me hard, okay? Regardless, it's just that's the way it goes. Generally speaking, we get focused hard. The times that we don't get focused hard is solely when we do things like this, where we're moving up, we're using islands, we're not getting spotted until we fire our guns, and by the time we fire our guns, it's too late for folks. But Odin finishes off the hood over there. Uh, the Odin is actually doing some, some work. But uh, also, you know, there is a little saying that the candle that burns the brightest burns half as long. So keep that in mind. Just like I like to push forward, you guys know, as you've seen my streams, it doesn't always work out. 
Sometimes you get caught, and when you get caught, you're S O L. Okay? Everybody knows what that means. But we've got the broad, uh, well, we had the broad side of the Brandenburg, but he's paying attention. He's coming in, he's angling against me. Um, you can see I am well overextended here, and I'm by overextended, I'm not really overextended. There's only one person who can currently shoot me. I am keeping an eye on those destroyers, but this map gives you so many opportunities for crossfires. You can see I am using that secondary booster to get those shots. We've already got a double fire going on Brandenburg. Uh, you can see we are shooting at his superstructure, and honestly, this wouldn't be the worst ship to fire HE in out of the main guns. Because you're going to get those fires with the secondaries as you close in. And if you can trigger some damage cons with your main guns, like the amount of shells that you're going to have hitting targets, like you're going to get those permanent fires. You just are. It's going to be a thing. But you can see uh, secondaries going nuts. We actually slap him with our, our main guns pretty good there. Uh, six full penetrations. Brandenburg's starting to push towards us. He's trying to uh, kite away. He's, he realizes he's overextended. Bismarck trying to shoot us. We're angled decently, but he, he gets a couple of nice penetrations on us. But uh, again, Bismarck, same same situation. Except Bismarck starts to turn towards us. Um, now, Bismarck has 15-inch guns. He has good secondaries as well. Uh, but again, I feel like these secondaries are more numerous and that they are more accurate than the Bismarck secondaries. Um, not quite as accurate as the Americans, but with that ability to lob islands with these, you gotta love them. As you can see it demonstrated right there, lobbing over the uh, corner of that island to shoot the Brandenburg. And because we don't have the uh, the consumable for targeting specific people, um, this ship will fire secondaries off of both sides of its ship and hit lots of targets. Like, it, it is, it's insane what happens when you can get this thing into position to use those secondaries on multiple people. It's hilarious. It really is. And that's why I say that I think this thing is a great meme ship. Do I think it's the best ship overall? No. But it is a fun meme ship. Meme ship. And it is a fun little ship to take out and just have fun in. Uh, but that's where I stand on the ship. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think. As we've set, uh, you know, our secondaries ablaze on this uh, Bismarck. And I believe they get a fire here. I could be wrong. Yep, no fire. Only two fires we've gotten so far in this match have been on the Brandenburg. But, uh, yeah. Are they the most reliable secondaries in the world? No. But uh, they are fun. They do their job. And they do slap. Uh, especially destroyers. If you've got your secondary booster and a destroyer pops around the corner on you, if you can avoid his torpedoes, your secondaries are plenty to kill that destroyer before he can go away. Like, it, it is no joke. Now, here you can see Bismarck coming right towards me. And I am lining him up for a torp strike. This man has a decent little chunk of health left. But our four torpedoes should have no trouble dealing with him. Now we take a shot at the Brandenburg here. We're going to turn in. And the reason we're turning in is we've already launched the torps on the left side. I want to make sure that if I do miss these torps, that uh, I have the torps on the right side ready just in case. And uh, we're lining up the torpedoes on the second side of the ship. And you can see we would have missed, but we go ahead and take those torpedoes. We know we're going to hit him with at least one. That should be all it takes. We take a shot at his superstructure. Not the best damage in the world. Uh, we get set on fire. We go ahead and trigger a heal. And just as our torpedoes are about to get to him, the Kansas from across the other side manages to slap him. Now, we do have uh, a fire burning on the Brandenburg currently which is preferable. We know we already had him on a permanent fire, or we knew we already had him on a damage con, but he apparently got his uh, damage con back or something because he managed to put the fire out. It could be that he had a triggered um, fight fire with fire response because we got two more fires. So who knows? Maybe we got two and somebody got an extra fire on him, which is always a problem uh, when you're a fire starter, but you got to love it. Um, Brandenburg, he, he's got he's got a very short life left in him. I mean, he's got four people focusing him. Um, well, I say four. At least three people focusing him. You got a DD shooting at him. You got um, the Kansas. And being broadside to a Kansas nowadays with uh, laser beams that that thing fires is just not going to go well for you. I don't care what ship you're in. Um, the turtleback on this thing seems to do okay. 
Um, I don't think it's the strongest turtle back in the world, but uh, again, if you're broadside, you're gonna get slapped. Whether it's citadels or not means you're you're not may, maybe gonna get dev struck at close range, but you're still gonna take 15 to 20,000 damage or more depending on who's shooting at you. A Kansas hits you broadside with uh, 10 rounds. I mean that could be 25,000 damage. So you gotta you gotta know when and where you can you can give up a, an angle to get the rear guns on target. Um, and remember that these are just 305s. The rear guns may not give you that much in return for what you're about to take. Uh, but Kansas misses his shots there. Not very effective. We take a shot at the superstructure, get a little bit of damage here and there. Our secondary is still pumping away at the guy. Remember, we have 11.9 kilometer secondaries on this thing. And we are still hitting the target and doing damage to a freaking uh, battleship at this rate. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. Now imagine if this was a cruiser of some sort. Now, obviously, you can see more of what we expect out of the Bismarck sec secondaries there where they're just splashing everywhere, they're not focused, they're not hitting the target as often as they do up close and personal. But Brandenburg gets finished off by the Kansas. We expected that. And uh, now it's just one man left. It's Cleveland. He's low health. Uh, a destroyer has, had been shooting him for quite a while, and I don't know why, but... Uh, you know, sometimes you got to know when to disengage, fellas. It's just the way it is. It, there's no shame in disengaging to, to re-engage later when you have the advantage. But just getting into a fight, as you can see, we get a good first salvo, 5,800. Not citadeling him, but just stacking hits on him. Uh, he's got our Kansas burning from stem to stern. Literally been here, done this, seen how this ends. Uh, it's not fun. But all you can do in this situation is just make sure that you take good shots. Kansas knows that if he just gets one good salvo, this Cleveland is dead. And I know the same thing. And you can see I wait for him to make his big turns. That's going to be when he's at his slowest. And you, you anticipate where he's going to be. You take the shot. And while it's not the most accurate salvo in the world, we still get three hits on him. Two of them uh, ricocheted. That's going to happen occasionally. Kansas has triggered a damage con one way or the other. Cleveland is now trying to shoot us, which is hilarious because we got all the hit points. So uh, you got to love that. But we get a couple of penetrations. Or actually, Kansas, I think, gets a couple of penetrations there. Ours falls short and behind. So not preferable. But at this point, any shell that hits this man kills him. It doesn't matter if it's destroyer. It doesn't matter if it's battleship. But uh, we're going to give a full spread. You can see there, each gun that I fired, we did a little ripple, uh, ripple fire. Each gun that I fired, I spread a little bit to try to block as many access points as possible. Give us our best chance to hopefully finish him off. And we finally get the man out of there. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this first look at the uh, the Brandenburg. I do like the ship. 120,000 damage, 2,000 base XP again. Uh, you got to see the new map as well and the secondary booster active. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.